Welcome to Electron Line, and now to show you what these diffraction patterns look like, we're going to combine them with interference patterns. And so again, in the, in the previous video, we showed you the ratio of how many of the interference fringes you'll find inside the central maximum of the diffraction pattern. When you have some thin slits side by side, here's a double slit pattern. Let's say that the distance between the slits is 0.5 millimeters and the width of each slit is 0.1 millimeter. Now the ratio of the number of, of fringes inside the, the central maximum of the diffraction grating can be calculated as follows. We know that the number of fringes is equal to two times the ratio of the distance divided by the, the size of each of the um, of the slits. So the distance between the slits divided by the size of the slits times 2. So if we do that, we get 2 times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.1, which is 5, times 2, which is equal to 10. So we should be able to see 10 fringes here. Now it's not quite exactly 10 fringes the way we envision it, because we have a central fringe right here due to the central maximum of the interference pattern. Then we have four more complete fringes on each side. So I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's four plus four is nine, plus the fifth one here is, uh, that four plus four is eight, plus the fifth one is nine. And then what happens is exactly at the location where the minimum occurs of the diffraction pattern, that's where you would have a maximum of interference pattern. And you have that on both sides right here. So really what you can think of it is that you have kind of a half a maximum right here that's canceled out by the minimum of the diffraction pattern. So you have 9 plus a half plus a half, which gives you basically 10 fringes internally like that. To show you how that works is, first of all, we're going to find the distance, the location of the first minimum of the diffraction pattern. So if we want to do that, we have to go ahead and use this concept right here, where y can be found for the minimum would be 2 times m times lambda times l divided by 2a. Hey, the way where that comes from is as follows. We know that the um, phase difference, and now notice that I use beta instead of phi for, for the uh, diffraction pattern. So beta is equal to the extra distance traveled between the top and the bottom part of the beam coming through a single slit divided by, uh, that would be the wavelength, times 2 pi. Now the extra distance traveled for a single slit can be found. So beta is equal to, that would be the slit, the, uh, the width of the slit times the sine of theta divided by lambda times 2 pi. And then to find the minimum, the minimum would be found when the phase difference is equal to a full 2 pi. So we take beta, we turn it into 2 pi. So to find the minimum, beta needs to be equal to 2 pi, so this becomes 2 pi equals a, and instead of writing the sine of theta, we can write the tangent of theta, like so, because for very small angles, and these are very small angles, the sine of theta is equal to the tangent of theta, times 2 pi divided by lambda. Right away we can see that we have 2 pi on both sides, so this can become 1 and this will become 1, and instead of writing the tangent of theta, we can write the opposite over adjacent. Remember that is this distance right here. So we're talking about this angle theta right there. The distance to the screen is called L. And let's say that the distance from there to there is called Y. So the opposite side over the adjacent side is equal to the tangent of theta. So we can write 1 is equal to A times Y over L. We still have lambda right here and that became 1. And now if we solve this for y, we get y is equal to L lambda divided by A. And notice that to find the first minimum, if we turn M into 1, that we have 2 divided by 2 that cancels out. So we have lambda times L divided by A, which is exactly what we have here. That's where that equation came from. That'll give us the distance to that first minimum for the diffraction pattern. And let's assume that L is equal to 2 meters to make it easy on ourselves. We'll throw in some numbers here. So this would be 2 meters. The wavelength that we're using is 500 nanometers. So 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And divide the whole thing by the slit width, which is 0 0.0001 meter. All right, now we need a calculator. 
a matter of fact, if we, that's 4 times 5, 2, that's actually 0 0.01 meter. This is equal to 0 0.01 meter, which is equal to 1 centimeter. So this is equal to 1 centimeter to the distance from the central maximum to the first minimum in our diffraction pattern. All right? Now, what I'm claiming here is that the fifth fringe, 1, 2, 3, 4, the fifth one, will fall in the exact same location. So let's see if that's true. So for that, we have to use the following equation, that the phase difference is equal to the extra distance traveled divided by the wavelength times 2 pi. Now this would be the phase difference to find the first, second, third, fourth, fifth max. That would be the fifth max. Remember how the phase difference goes. If the phase difference is equal to a, to a half a wavelength, which is pi, that gives us the first minimum. When it's equal to 2 pi, that gives us the first maximum. 4 pi is the second maximum, 6 pi the third maximum, 8 pi the fourth maximum, and 10 pi the fifth maximum. So I'm claiming that this would then be a phase difference of 10 pi, which is equal to the extra distance travel, which is d sine theta. So notice here, instead of writing a sine theta for the slit width, we use d, which is separation distance, because we're looking for the phase difference of the interference pattern, not the phase difference of the diffraction pattern. Let me just put it on top here so we can see the difference. This is for the diffraction pattern for the single slit, and this is for the interference pattern of the double slit. So d sine theta divided by lambda times 2 pi. And of course, the pi cancels out on both sides. And here, the 10 divided by 2, that gives me 5 over on this side and 1 on this side. Now, just like we did before, the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta. So we have 5 is equal to d times the tangent of theta divided by lambda. And of course, the tangent of theta, just as before, is equal to the ratio of y over L, the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we can say that 5 is equal to D times the opposite side Y adjacent side L times lambda. Solving that for Y, we get Y is equal to 5L lambda divided by D. Notice here we have Y equals L lambda over A. There we have Y equals 5L lambda over D. And so when plugging the numbers, we get 5 times L, which is 2 meters times 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters for the wavelength divided by the separation distance which is 0 0.0005 meters it's a zero right there and then if you grab your calculator you see that this is five times as big but this is five times bigger than the denominator that cancels all out and we get y equals 0 0.01 meter which is equal to one centimeter which is the exact same location as the first minimum of the diffraction pattern. So that shows, in this example, when the ratio is 5 to 1, the distance between the slits is 5 times the width of each slit. When we take the ratio, we get 2 times 5 divided by 1, which is 2 times, or 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.1, which is 10. So we should see 10 interference fringes inside the central maximum of the diffraction grating. And to show that that's indeed the case, we found the location of the minimum of the diffraction gradient, which is at one centimeters, and we found the maximum of the fifth fringe, one, two, three, four, five, of the interference pattern, which was also at the exact same location, which therefore shows and proves to us that we have basically nine whole fringes, plus a half, plus a half, a total of 10 fringes inside the diffraction pattern, when the ratio of D to A is five to one. And there you go, that proves this equation right here to be correct, and that's how we find out how many fringes we have inside the diffraction pattern, how many interference fringes we have inside the diffraction pattern. And that's how we do that.